in with another week of Kidopolis. Um, it is our last week of July. Can you believe it? I can't. Um, so this month and last month, we are talking about faith, trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Sorry, I get a mix up. That's okay. Um, and then this week in particular, our lesson is following Jesus will turn out greater than you can imagine. You'll turn out greater than you can imagine. And I think, oh, so true. I think about like in my own life, all of the great things that have happened because of me choosing to follow Jesus and not just for me, but for other people in my life. So I wanted to take that idea and tell you guys about the Bible. Ah, hi, another day in the Bible with Miss Jessie. Of course, that's why we're here, right? But I particularly wanted to talk about Paul, right? We've been talking about him a lot. And what were the few things I wanted you to remember? Paul used to be Saul. And when he was Saul, he was scary. And he went around and taught a lot of people about Jesus. Like pretty much every day once he turned into Paul, when he found God and Jesus in his faith. And he taught so many people about Jesus. And he wrote a lot of books in the Bible to teach me and you and your mom and your dad and grandma and your grandpa, everybody about Jesus. So <clears throat> keep in mind, Miss Jessie did not go to Bible school. So there are a lot of really smart people who know a lot about what I'm going to say. And if you have questions, you can ask me, but there are other people who are really good resources too, okay? If I make a mistake, that's okay. We can talk about it, okay? All right. So we're going to talk about the New Testament in particular. The Old Testament is so important for us to know. Um, but today we're just talking about the New Testament. So if you were to open your Bible, split it in half, basically, um, the New Testament would be the piece. I know it probably looks like your left, but in your right hand. Okay. So in the New Testament, it starts out. Well, we're going to talk about Jesus's life in the New Testament. Okay. But we have the gospels. There's four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And they talk a lot about the same stuff. Some of the same stories are in more than one. And that's okay. They um, say the same thing. They talk about Jesus' life and um, the miracle that he was. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They were written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Pretty convenient, right? Okay, so Luke. Look, this little, this little bugger. Just kidding. He was pretty cool, I guess. He wrote another really important book, um, and this book was about, I'm going to cover this up, The Disciples, the life of the disciples in the early church, the early Christian church. So this is um, after the life of Jesus and when people are really starting to go around and spread the word, the good news of his miracle, and what that means for us and our sins. So I just want to say... Following Jesus will turn out greater than you imagine. So these guys followed Jesus and think about all the great things that they did. Just think about that, okay? And the disciples who followed Jesus, think about all the great things that happened because of what, because of their choice to follow Jesus. Okay, so in the book of, Dis in the book of disciples, in the book of Acts, um, we learn about a guy named Saul. And he's a little scary, right? We know about Saul. Don't worry, he becomes Paul. But um, his story in the Bible kind of begins chapter 9, verse 11. And there's so much about him. more in there, but that is kind of where it starts. And from there, whoop, from there, Paul, Paul, after he found um, Jesus and heard about the good news and decided to start preaching it, he went on and wrote... 13, maybe 14 letters. Remember we talked about that book of Hebrews? We, we think maybe Paul wrote it, but mm, we're not quite sure. There's a lot of debate about it. <clears throat> okay, so Paul wrote all these letters. I'm going to go through them. Galatians, he wrote for the people of Galatia. That's first and second Thessalonians. Thessalonica. When I say he wrote them for them, he, it was a letter for them. It was a letter that he wrote to these people, these churches, and it got and it got put together in our Bible. Um, the order that it's in in our Bible is 
probably organized um, shortest to longest. And no, nope, longest to shortest. <laughs> Sorry. And then um, I put this here, uh, probably a little bit different. I'd have to check. But um, this is probably the order that he wrote it on. And a lot of these books, you can read about Paul's journey, where it lines up in the book of Acts. So Galatians, Galatia, Thessalonians, Thessalonica, Corinthians, Corinth, Romans, Rome, Ephesians, Ephesus. Oh my gosh. So this is, Miss Jessie um, this week is going to do her Bible study on this book right here. What, Jacob is going to make a guest appearance real quick. Jacob, how did you say I said this? I should say this? Uh, Philemon. Philemon, probably. Guess what? <laughs> I totally forgot that book existed. And you know what? That's okay. I think that's a really good indication for me to go ahead and do a little study on that. So if you want to, um, if that's something like that pops up in your life, get on Google, get your parents' permission, and see what you can learn about that book. Um, Colossians was written to the people of Colossus. Philippians was written to the people of Philippi. First and second Timothy, not the people of Timothea, was written to his buddy Timothy. Okay. Titus, is that the same thing he wrote to his buddy T Titus? Yep. And then I put a dotted line here with the question mark Hebrews. It's kind of a big debate. Who knows? Maybe sometime in our life there's some really cool biblical scholar. Like the people I told you about how there's people who study the Bible. They go to school specifically for it. Maybe one day soon we'll see somebody who has definitive proof that he wrote Hebrews. Who knows? Um, so Paul decided to follow Jesus and he wrote all these books. And I am sure, I'm not sure, but um, I bet some of you maybe have one of a verse from one of these Bibles, maybe somewhere in your house, maybe just hanging up like in a painting. Maybe um, it's like just written on a piece of paper that somebody put up. But think about all the places, all of the places that these, these verses have been to help people find Jesus, to help people live a better life, to help people find comfort in Jesus and God, and just to help people. I think that's the coolest thing in the world. I'm just, I think it's awesome. One guy wrote all of this stuff. Well, one, he wrote all of this. Luke wrote this. And I think it's so cool that we can trace it back, you know? So... I want to go over one more, tell you one more time. Following Jesus will turn out greater than you can imagine. You have no idea the people that you will help. You have no idea how much Jesus will help you unless you follow him. And you have no idea how much Jesus will help you help others. And I'm telling you, if that doesn't sound cool to you, Jesus help you help others, just wait and see because I can promise you guys it is the biggest blessing to be able to help others in the name of Jesus. Cool? All right, so now you're going to watch the so-and-so show, and we're going to come back here, and we're going to go over our memory verse. Do you guys remember what book it was in? Ephesians, okay? So we're going to go over our memory verse from the book of Ephesians, written for the people in Ephesus. See you in a minute. And there. Okay. Did we miss it? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Hold All on. Right. I'll, I'll extend the time here a little bit. Thank you. All right. Ready, set, right. go. Say cheese. I'm already smiling. Cheese. Okay, fine. Cheese. How long did you set the time? Uh, oh, sorry. All right. One more time. One more time. Come on. We, we're we're going to get this. Okay. I'm setting it for seven and a half okay. seconds. Okay. Here we go. Last time. Boom. Let's do it. Here we go. This is the keeper. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did not mean to hit you. I know. I know. You're going fast. Can we just keep doing this? Yeah, we, fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, let me see if it do took. It. I don't think it took. Well, no, I think it might have taken. Oh, I think we're good. Yeah. We could just one more? No, I'm done. Come on. Thank you. Goodbye. Come on. I don't want. Come on. All right. Okay. Fine. Go. Come on. Okay, great. I couldn't hold on to the grip. I, I'll do it one more time, all right? But this is ridiculous. There's so many pictures of us. We don't need any more pictures. You the world me? needs more pictures of us, Brandon. I don't think it does. Yes, it does. Fine. You know what? Take your picture. Just take all right, yourself. All right, fine. Gonna... I can't take it like that when you're facing the di wrong direction. You're supposed to be facing that way. Look. Oh, fine. Be that way. 
Everybody, I'm John. And I'm Brandon, and welcome to the So-and-So Show. Well, we love to tell you jokes that make you laugh. Well, For I mean, we example. do more than tell you jokes. No, no, no. What do you call a frozen dog? I don't know. A popsicle. <laughs> 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 I do, but John, seriously. What do you call an alligator in a vest? A crocodile. No, what? No, an investigator? Oh, <laughs> no, I get it. That's funny. That's a really yeah, good one. Yeah. Thank you. No, but this show isn't all about telling people jokes. Well, I know we, that. I know that. I know that. I just wanted to I just wanted to practice a little for my stand-up comedy act on Tuesday. What? Where is it? Well, at the one and only Cafe for Comedy Coffee and Curly Fries, stand up every Tuesday mid-morning. Oh. Haven't you ever heard of the Curly Fried Comedy and Coffee to go? Uh-uh. Laps and lattes. Mm-hmm. Muffins over monologues? Have you, have you seriously never heard of any of these events? Uh, no, but it sounds pretty cool. P- pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. What is- <laughs> this is the event of the week for upcoming comedians. It's like the place to be. It's not just pretty cool. It's basically the most epically cool thing that's ever happened to a Tuesday since tacos. Oh, well, awesome. Good for you. Well, thanks. Thanks. Mm-hmm. It's, I'm sorry I'm so uptight. It's just that I'm, I'm wondering if... Even though it's a super awesome opportunity, if it would be even more awesome if I didn't do it. What? It's just, I, I, I don't know how it's going to go. What if they don't like me? What if they don't laugh? Brandon, oh, no ha yeah, Okay, well, you never know how something's going to turn out before you do it, you know? Well, when I eat a grilled cheese sandwich, Brandon, I know it's going to feel like a thousand tiny dairy miracles melting in my mouth all at once every time. Okay. I know that for sure. Yeah. But with stand-up comedy, I don't know. Well, yeah, well, that's, I mean, what's the worst that could happen? The worst? Mm-hmm. Where's your dream? It's right this way. So paper bags, am I right? And everyone thought these puppies would never be in style. Oh, muffin? Anyone? They're (laughs) gluten-full. Who am I kidding? No one's even here. Oh. That's the worst you can imagine? That doesn't seem that bad. Whatever. All right, now answer this question. Think about it. What's the best that could happen? The best? Best is over here. Hey, everyone, I'm Jonathan. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, who here hates traffic? Yeah. I know. I know. It's like, move your cars faster on the road. I got places to be. Oh, hey, but what about paying taxes? Ooh, right? Right? Could those forms be any more complicated? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, if one more ad interrupts my streaming video, I'm going to be like... <laughs> oh, stop it. Hey, stop it. Thank you. My time's up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Especially you. <laughs> Thank you. I think that seems pretty doable. Maybe. No, I mean, maybe even if they don't throw flowers and even if you don't wear a suit, which I must admit is the least likely thing of your scenario, Mm. it could still be good. Good. Good is like an insult to an artist. It it either has to be great or it's worthless. Okay, yeah, but you're never going to be great if you don't start somewhere. So you're saying I should do it? Look, I'm saying you never know how it's going to turn out. So don't let your fear of the unknown be what stops you. Okay. Okay. You're right. I'm going to do it. All right. You've inspired me. Ah, that's awesome. Uh, can I practice my jokes on you right now? Uh, that's Bible Story Time with Kellen. Oh. Well, hello. my 
my favorite co-host. Hey, what you got for us today, Kellen? Today, we're going all the way to the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. After all the history in the Old Testament and after Jesus came and rescued people and made a way for us to have a relationship with God again, you can read Revelation to find the answer to this next question. What happens next? Oh, I can't wait to find out. Well, you'll have to wait because first we're going to dive into some viewer mail. Wait, is viewer mail a thing? Is actual mail still a thing? Of course. I asked our viewers to describe the best place they could imagine, and these are their responses. Do you guys mind helping me read a few? Sure. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Good throw. Yeah. Who wants to go first? Oh, me. Uh, this letter is from Ariel in Broken Bow, Nebraska. Nice. There you go. Uh, dear Kellen, I hope you're doing well. Thank you, Ariel. Yeah. The best place I can imagine would have lots of flowers because I love flowers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can almost picture it. Uh, when I was a little girl, there was this beautiful field of wildflowers down the street from our house. There were flowers of every color, blues and purples and yellows of every shade. Sometimes I would just lie down in the field and watch the clouds move in the sky for hours until my dad finally had to call me home for dinner. The best place I can imagine would have flowers as far as the eye could see, and they'd grow all year round. That's a place I'd like to see someday. Hmm. Wow. Paints a pretty picture, doesn't it? Sure does. Um, let's hear your letter. Oh, you bet. This one is from Javier from Claremore, Oklahoma. Hi, Javier. Let's see. Dear Kellen, I'm glad you asked about my imagination because imagining is what I do best. <laughs> <laughs> the coolest thing I can imagine is an amusement park with the tallest rides in the world. I'm talking about a roller coaster as high as the sky. Can you imagine riding a roller coaster through the clouds and right by the sun? And it wouldn't be scary because the clouds are actually cotton candy. So you could scoop some up to eat every time you rode by. And the best part of Javier's world, that's what it'll be called, is that there are no lines. That would be awesome. That is awesome. I mean, I love roller coasters and that sounds wonderful. <laughs> hey, have you got a letter, Kellen? I sure do. This one is from Keith. He lives in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Ooh, it's got a tricky one. Ah. <clears throat> Dear Kellen, one of my favorite things to do is play video games with my friends. Every Friday night, my friends and I go to one of our houses or apartments or whatever, and we order pizza and we play video games. And I'm talking all kinds of video games, racing games, side scrollers, adventure games, open world builders, even classics like Pac-Man and Pong. It's my favorite place to be, surrounded by people I love, games I like to play, and food I like to eat. What could be better than that? Wow. Who knew mail could be so much fun? I'm gonna go have to check my mailbox later. No kidding. It's really cool to see into other people's imaginations. What did that have to do with the book of Revelation? I'm glad you asked. The book of Revelation was written by one of Jesus' disciples named John. It was written long after Jesus died and rose again, when John was an old man. God gave John a vision of the future, so John wrote it all down. No kidding. So. What's heaven gonna be like? Is it gonna be like what we read in these letters? Yeah, will there be flowers and roller coasters? Uh, and pizza? Oh, please tell me there will be pizza in heaven. Um, I have a confession to make. I don't really have all the answers to your questions. God only gave John a glimpse into the future. He didn't fill in every single detail, but maybe if you close your eyes and listen to what John wrote, you'll be able to picture a little bit of it. In his vision, John saw a new heaven and a new earth, and he heard a voice. The voice said, look, God now makes his home with the people. 
He will live with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death and there will be no more sadness. There will be no more crying or pain. Things are no longer the way they used to be. And John saw God himself sitting on a great white throne. And God said, I am making everything new. Wow. Yeah, that's better than pizza. Huh. Way better. No more sadness, no more pain. Everything that's old will be made new. Can you even imagine? I really can't. Yeah, it's like, it's like it's better than I can even imagine. Exactly. Even though we don't know every single detail about the future or about heaven, we do know that our amazing, creative, powerful, and loving God has a plan that will blow our mind. Oh man, we have got a lot to look forward to. No doubt. Thanks, Kellen. Yes, indeed. Keep in touch, fellas. Hey, I'll send you a letter. <laughs> ah, now where do I keep my stamps? I don't know. Okay. Reveal the question. Oh, what do you think heaven will be like? Ooh. Yeah, do you imagine lots of clouds, harps, streets of gold? Will there be pizza involved? Talk about it together. What do you think heaven will be like? And maybe it'll be like going to my stand-up routine. Do you think there's some comedy in heaven? If you're gonna be there, there will have to be. Ah, oh, thanks, man. Wait, were you being nice or mean just then? We'll see you next time on The So-and-So Show. See ya. What's black and white and red all over? Sunburn penguin! <laughs> this is my mom waking me up when I'm late for school. All right, here we go. Wake up, you're late for school! <laughs> All right, you know what my favorite breakfast cereal is? Any cereal! All right, here we go. How about this one? I got a better one for you, are you right? Um, one fish, two fish. Okay, so a lot of you might be thinking to yourself, Miss Jessie, hmm, if Paul wrote all of those letters in the Bible, then how come sometimes you say when we do our memory verse that there's different versions? If one guy wrote it, then why are there different versions? And the answer to that is that the Bible has been translated many different ways. Paul did not write it in English. If me and Paul were having a conversation, if Paul and I were having a conversation right now, um... I'm sure, first of all, that if God wanted me to understand him, he would make it work. But he would be speaking, like, Greek or Hebrew, um, and I would be speaking this, and it'd be, like, kind of confusing, right? So, it needed to be translated into English. And when they translated it, sometimes they found that some ways um, were easier to understand than others, or some people thought maybe, like, this way is truer to the way that Paul wrote it. There's a lot of different versions that can be useful for a lot of different things. So when you do your memory verse, it's in the NIRV, at least this month that it is and it usually is. Um, Miss Jessie's Bible is in the NIV. So those are really close, but they're slightly different. NIV is the New International Version, um, and that's an English version. And then the NIRV is a New International Revised Version. So they revised it. So it's just a little different, and that's like, okay. So you have your memory verse from last week. And I'm going to read it from my NIV this week. So it's going to be a little different. Um, if you go back and look at it last week um, or any time this month, uh, go ahead and then compare it to what I say. They're pretty close. And um, maybe one just sits in your heart differently. But you know what? Both are great. Both written by Paul. Both were meant for you to read. God made sure that it was here today. Okay? So we are in... Ephesians, like I said, chapter two. So I found my book of Ephesians. I'm gonna find my big number two. It's right there. And take my finger. And go, do, 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 do. There's the num little number eight. <clears throat> so, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. So it's a little bit different. So if you guys have been doing the memory verses 
and we have our junior varsities and our varsities. These are like super varsities. This is like college level varsity if you want to memorize this version because it's a little bit different, okay? Perfect. So send me your videos. Anything that um anytime you memorize your memory verse, send it to me. I'll make sure you get a treat. Okay? We're gonna have a new memory verse next week. August. I love August. It's a very exciting month for our family. We have two birthdays and an anniversary back to school. And let's just face it, it's still a fun month because it's summertime. So we are going to pray. Give me one second to get ready for that. Don't forget that you can always send me your prayer requests. Um, we have our email. We have Facebook. You can get a hold of Jacob on Facebook, Jacob Christian, um, or like on our discussion board. You can text me. Um, I'm going to tell you my phone number. Are you ready? 765-337-7377. Anytime you want to send me a text, say, hey, Miss Jessie, can you pray for this? Absolutely, I will, okay? All right, so here we go. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for the people that you have inspired to write your word. And thank you so much for making sure that that word gets put into our hands. Um, thank you for people who have translated it and who have done the work of figuring out like what some of the dip more difficult parts mean. Thank you for those people who study it um, and make it accessible, who make it easy for us to understand. Um, thank you so much for uh, letting me teach these kiddos and thank you so much for having these kiddos um, come learn from me and from your word. And uh, thank you for your son's life and um, just the miracle that he was. Thank you for letting us be um, uh, people who get to experience that miracle through just the glory and the beauty of it. Um, we love you so much, God. We pray that we um, live a life that is so pleasing to you. And we pray this all in your son's name. Amen. Okay, so that's all I have this week. Um, I hope you guys have a great week. I hope that learning about the life of Paul has been so handy for you. I hope that you have been inspired to look at the way that your Bible is set up and look at all of the cool little, like they're almost like Easter eggs. It's almost like a treasure hunt to learn these things and how they're all interconnected. At least I think it's cool. I don't know. Um, I am going to look at this book. I want to say Phil Lemon, but that's not, that's not what it is. Philem and it okay. I'll figure Philemon, it out. Philemon, Phil, Philemon. I, I, I no no. We'll figure it out. Um, so I'll let you know how that goes next week. Okay, I'm gonna do just a little study on it. If you know anything about that book, please let me know. I am so excited. I am I am a little bit embarrassed, but it's okay. You know what? I'm not too proud to admit that there is something that I know nothing about. So I'll see you next week. I will give you an update on that. Honey, how's your study in Philemon going? Philemon? Is that really how you say it? I thought it was Philemon.